That is a, not the slide I have. There's no text. So we're going to have to do it this way. Okay, does anyone have Twitch up? Confirm that we, this looks like this. Like 90% of the time it doesn't. Let's take a look here. We're good? It didn't even show up on Twitch. I'm going to make it look. All right. Something's live. It looks like me. We are back. We are good. All right. Twitch, you're going to have to bear with me. You live on my phone today. So uh, I believe today is August 22nd, 2024. We are all here for CSE 466. Uh, my name is Robert Wassinger. I'm going to be your instructor for the semester. Uh, if you're not here for that class, you are in the wrong room. Okay, uh, a little bit of background about me. Uh, I work in the CEPCOM lab. Uh, this is kind of the cybersecurity lab at ASU. Uh, I am pursuing my PhD and done all my coursework. I'm just kind of wrapping it up. Uh, I've been with the CEPCOM lab for many years. This is not my first rodeo on home college. Uh, if you did CSE 365, you may have interacted with me uh, at some point. Uh, has everybody here taken 365? Has anyone not? Let's try that. Okay, we I'm got it. I'm taking kind of the equivalent of 365, but at a different college. Okay, uh, same same story here. Something similar, different college. Okay, cool. Uh, that, that as far as I'm aware, that is a prerequisite for this course, uh, and I'm going to function as if you know that material. Which brings us here: prerequisites. I assume uh, you are somewhat proficient uh, with Linux, Linux tools. You know how to use a terminal. Uh, you have some familiarity from, I believe, it was the last module of 365. Uh, with debugging, so this is using GDB. Uh, some idea of how a, a disassembler works, this would be like Ida, Ghidra, uh, Binary Ninja, any of those tools. Uh, if you don't, is anyone not familiar, raise your hand, I just need to know where I'm at. Okay, we're good, a couple. Uh, we, we can make it up. Uh, you have somewhat fluent in x86 assembly, so you're able to read x86 assembly. There's gonna be virtually no source code in this class. Everything that you're going to interact with is going to be a binary. It's why you need to know how to use GDB. It's why you need to know how to use a disassembler and why you need to know to read assembly. Uh, you need not only need to know how to read it, you also need to know how to write it, uh, which will be our first assignment, but it's not coming out today. Uh, and lastly, I expect that you are knowledgeable on like how to research uh, Linux syscalls, how to kind of figure stuff out on your own. Uh, this boils down to how do you read documentation? How do you ask a question? And how does the man command work? Can you read a man page? Is everyone familiar with man? Good. If you ask a question that can be answered by man, I'm going to tell you read the man page. Fair warning. Uh, historically, this class is one of the most difficult courses in the ASU computer science uh, undergrad program. Uh, it's going to move at a very rapid pace. Uh, I know there's been several iterations of this course. This is like the fifth or sixth iteration of it on Home College. Uh, for this iteration, I intend on moving through 10 modules over the course of 16 weeks, uh, and there will be no last minute curve to pass students. All right. Uh, you can ask anyone that's taken a cyber, cyber security course uh, with me uh, in the past. I don't curve at the end. Uh, the way that I kind of approach this stuff is if the class as a whole is struggling, we'll deal with it then. And then when we move on, we're done with whatever that topic is. Right. So I am willing to, you know, provide extra time, spend more time reiterating a topic, but there won't be like a sudden bailout in the last week. All right. Now, the revert, the flip side of that is you'll always know what your grade is. Your grade is live. It's it's 24 seven. You can access it in real time whenever you want. So you always know what your grade is, how you're doing in the course, but don't stick around hoping for a last minute bailout because that's, that's not how it's going to work. Uh, as we move through the first module or so of the material, if you're having doubts, you're struggling, you can talk to me, uh, but please consider uh, dropping out of the course. Uh, this isn't meant to be like a super scary thing. It's just, I don't want to hurt people's GPAs. This is a class that people take at the end of their undergrad. And if you're looking for an easy course, to just, hey, I want to knock this out and check out, don't take this class. It's going to be probably the single most demanding course that you'll take in your undergrad. But I just want that to be very clear. Historically, uh, across all iterations, roughly half of students that sign up for the course complete it. Okay? Uh, facts. 
It's not to intimidate you, but it's to let you know what you're signing up for. If you're taking other demanding courses, think about fixing your schedule, one way or the other. Cool. So why would you go through this grueling like, material? Well, it turns out uh, this class runs on something called Pwn College, which if everyone, most of us have done 365, you've probably uh, experienced it uh, in 365. And one of the benefits of Pwn College is that we offer belts and incentives and shiny things. Uh, and we reward people that are willing to kind of go through this, this great grind, right? And you'll truly learn something. Not that you can't learn things in other classes, but this will be all hands-on, very, very real world applied cybersecurity skills. How does this course uh, structure? How does it run? So today's kind of a mulligan, uh, just because we have to get everyone on the same page. The class as a whole runs in a flipped classroom model. Now, a lot of people say, oh, it's a flipped classroom. But what does that mean for you? The first two modules, I think, are gonna be a little bit rocky, uh, just because we have to get scheduling to line up. But once we get through the first couple weeks, it's gonna be a very consistent pattern. Friday, new material will go live on Pwn College. That will include lecture material, that will include challenges, that will include all of the work that you have to do uh, for that time period. A module consists of several pre-recorded lectures. Uh, these will likely include um, old lecture videos as well as new lecture material that I record. Uh, that will be kind of my take on things. Uh, and then a series of increasing difficulty challenges uh, roughly targets about 30 challenges per module. The expectation is, because I said this is being launched on Friday, over the weekend, watch the lecture material. Try and mess around with the challenges. I don't expect you to solve them all, just work on them, get stuck. All right, you're stuck on something. Then when you show up in class, you can say, hey, I'm stuck on this. I don't understand what was said in this video and I will answer your questions here. Come with questions. That is what class time will be. Yes? I think with this, I just wanted to ask, so what is the deadline in terms of modules like? So, so the, I'll get to that on the next slide. The, the oh. question for Twitch is what, what is the deadline to what's kind of the scheduling? Uh, but before, I believe, I believe it's the next slide, uh, where we'll have the actual schedule of deadlines. Uh, so, the idea is you try and tackle the material, you tell me what you're stuck on, we get you unstuck. Uh, it's a hybrid course, so there are two sections. This is the Thursday section. There is also the Tuesday section. Content will not be repeated. Attend and or watch both classes. It's listed as a hybrid for you. It's listed as a hybrid for Tuesday. Uh, we're doing it by complementing the other. Uh, there was a question offline, if there, you are allowed to show up on the opposing day. Uh, the answer is yes, as long as we don't run into capacity issues. As Twitch is aware, this is being streamed. Uh, class is streamed at twitch.tv slash home college. Uh, videos are also uploaded usually a couple days, within a couple days of the class happening uh, to a YouTube playlist where you can access it there as well. Attendance is encouraged and appreciated. It is not mandatory. I greatly appreciate it because like I said, the reason I'm here is to answer your questions through live demos. So if you're here in person asking a question, we can go back and forth and hopefully get stuff squared away live in real time. It's a lot more fun for me. Hopefully it'll be a lot more fun for you. Course structure, there are no exams. The course consists of about 10 modules as I said. Each module is a series of challenges. Your course grade is the average of these module scores. Uh, Real-time grading is available on Pwn College. I will do a little demo of what Pwn College is for those that aren't familiar uh, at the end of class. So, question with schedule. Uh, here is our schedule. This says knowledge check because I failed to update the slide. Uh, but what we're, it is on the syllabus, which some people said that the syllabus was not available. Fall 2024. Fall 2024. Now, mine's going to be a little different than yours, but you should have this course thing. Uh, and and we, have, we, have, we have syllabus. Uh, if you were on the ASU class search and hit syllabus, it should have brought you directly to this page. That is my fault. Uh, sure. No, that, that, that's fair. 
Um, but I want to make sure that if anyone didn't see the syllabus, you know how to find it. All right. Um, the same stuff is outlined on the syllabus as far as what the modules are, when are the dates, it should match my slides. If they don't, uh, let me know, we'll get it squared away. So, uh, course schedule. This says knowledge check uh, on the slides, but if we check out the syllabus, it should say something a little bit different. It says program security. Uh, so, I'm assuming that you guys did some binary exploitation 365. A prior iterations of CSE 466, I had, for instance, a shell coding module, had a memory corruption module. I had some of these modules where it's good binary exploitation stuff, but a lot of it has been already pulled into or touched on in CSE 365. I'm not going to rehash that material. And so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of sum up everything that was done in uh, 365, build on top of it, and move forward with a generic program security module. It's going to encapsulate all of that, get that out of the way so we can get into some fun stuff. So uh, that's what that's going to be. Now, prior iterations, we have reverse engineering. This iteration will be advanced reverse engineering. So there will be a change to the material, there will be a change to the lecture, there will be a change to the challenges. There will be new challenges. Okay. Prior iterations of 466 did not cover raw. This iteration will. Uh, fun fact, I attended the very first iteration of Pwn College uh, for CSE 466. The very first iteration followed a pattern very similar to this. We did cover raw like six years ago. Uh, so we're going to go rock, uh, we're going to touch on heap exploitation, uh, then we're going to have a program exploitation module. Now I know that there is program exploitation on the dojo right now, and there are modules with these same names on the dojo right now. You are welcome to try and tackle them. If I reuse the challenges, yes, you get credit. If I don't include them, you don't get credit. And if I add challenges, you have to do them anyways. Okay, uh, that, that is the deal. Uh, we're then going to do kernel exploitation, uh, race conditions, sandbox escapes. Uh, we're going to do microarchitectural exploitation. Uh, so we're going to take a look at Spectre Meltdown. Uh, if you successfully move through this material, uh, you will write your own Spectre attack and your own Meltdown attack from scratch. Uh, we're going to have a kind of final exam or major boss of system exploitation, and that's going to kind of wrap up the semester. Question? I don't think you're sharing the right screen on your Oh, it, you know... Good call. The, the statement was that Twitch is not happy. Give me one second. Horrible thing to stitch together. <laughs> Why don't you go live on I, I don't have that set up at the moment. This is why you show up in person on day one, guys. Bam, you don't see it. Okay, I got one more fix. Let's go here, let's go here. Bam, add. Okay. Give it a minute for the Twitch delay. We'll change a slide or two. Here we get there. I do have one question. Question. Yeah. Is there almost like a, like, are there supposed to be like some overlap with like those last sections there? That is a good question. And the answer is there's an overlap with all of these. Yeah. If you would have uh, so uh, the, the comment was, hey, there's an overlap here. Uh, between, it's not necessarily the first couple, this is me getting onto our Friday pace, uh, but starting from here, uh, we have this ends at 9.30, this launches 9.27. Uh, so what happens is uh, every module will be due on a Monday, the preceding Friday, the content will be launched of the next thing. All right. So there is an overlap, you are correct. Now, yes? 
uh, you mentioned on how home college, there's are no deals if somebody's name for right those aren't guaranteed to be the same as the actual course model. So I'm going to skip ahead here because I really like that I added this slide. Home College 2024 changes. Uh, this is a question that comes up every semester. Is hey, if I do everything early, right? Do I get count? Do it? Does it count? Can I work ahead? It's got the same name. Is it the same thing? And for a long time now, I have been quoting the exact same blurb, uh, typically uh, saying obligatory copy pasta, uh, because because at this point it's it's kind of me beating a dead horse. Uh, it says, it is always nice to see that people are individually interested in the site's content. Please keep in mind that there is no guarantee that any existing modules or module content will be used in a given class iteration. Instructors reserve the right to exclude, modify, and add content every course iteration. Nothing is formally assigned as part of an ASU course until the ASU course instructor assigns it. So, it, it's a nice generic, generic blurb. Right, uh, and I've been using the same thing for years, not just for uh, like this class, but for all the instructors that use Poem College, because it's a common question, right? Uh, that, that's the answer. And as far as when something is assigned, it's not today, because I told you what I plan on doing. It, it is whenever the challenges are available. So we're here on Poem College, we're on CSE 466, fall 2024. It's whenever you start seeing these. Right now you won't, I get to see it because I'm an admin. Uh, and these numbers are not accurate. Okay, so it, it's not worth uh, snapshotting it to get an idea of what's going on. Right, uh, like some of them could go down, some of them could go up. Like when the first thing's assigned, we get to reverse engineering. While you're doing the first assignment, I'll be changing reverse engineering, okay? I'm building the tracks as the train is moving. So nobody knows what's actually going to be there until we get there. Good question, though. Let me find where we were. Okay, so uh, the comment was that these these overlap and they do, uh, and that is if people people are the type of student that wants to work ahead, you get the material on the Friday. You'll have a minimum, I believe, it's ten days, except for this first one might be. They're all thirteen, I think, thirteen or seventeen. Uh, that's not, that sounds right. Uh, but the the general idea is things get launched on Friday. Uh, you get the weekend plus a week plus another weekend. So every assignment you should have at least two weekends to work on, but there is an overlap on the weekends. All right. So the idea is we can move through all this content, which is what we need to do. You can manage your time appropriately and you get two weekends to do it, which I think is a lot better than just hitting it um, once a week, like every Monday you get it, Monday it's done. Right. By giving you the overlap, you have the ability to say, hey, I want to have this weekend off. I'm going to go hard next weekend or the prior weekend to make up for it. Now, the other comment was uh, timing, uh, 17 or I guess someone said 13. These are, I believe, 10 days. Yeah, those look like 10. Uh, these are easier topics to go through. Uh, so 10 days is a week, seven days plus a weekend. That's how we get to 10. Uh, the rest of them uh, should be 17, I believe. So two weeks plus a weekend. Yes, question. I'm just curious, are the deadlines hard? The deadlines are hard. Uh, now, if collectively as a course, you just decide to like, or as a class, you decide to rebel and it's just, hey, none of us get it. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, but aside from insane, you know, scenarios, this will be the pace that we move at. Question. Do you do, uh, say like a deadline passes and then you revisit the module later? Do you do that after that? There's a slide hiding ahead. Okay. Good question though. Yeah. I appreciate the questions, guys. Like if I'm saying, hey, it's later, don't don't take it as a, uh, I like interaction. That's what makes this fun. Cool, so how is a module graded? Uh, module grades are weighted as follows. 80% of a module's grade is just whatever percentage you got done, okay? If there's 10 challenges, you do five of them. 50% is in this part right here, all right? Challenge completion. 20% of the module's grade is this thing that's called an early bird checkpoint. So the biggest problem that students have in this course is they start late. They say, ah, it's gonna be easy, right? There, there's lectures over here, I got this. 
And then the last weekend comes, students try and work on it, and it all blows up. This early bird checkpoint grade is a, an effort to try and not penalize you, but reward you for starting early. Every module has a checkpoint. We'll start with this one, because this is when we get to our Friday uh, pacing here. So we see this rock module will launch on September 13th. There's a checkpoint of the 23rd, and then it's actually due on the 30th. If you get half of the challenges done, it doesn't matter if it's the first five or the last five, right? You get 50% of the stuff solved, then you qualify for this checkpoint. Get 50% of it done by whatever the checkpoint is, you get 20% of the modules grade. Now, for modules that are only a week or kind of these shorter time frames, if we look up at this first assignment here, you'll see that the checkpoint is the same as the due date. Functionally, what that means is if you solved only 50% of this first module, you're going to get a higher grade than if we didn't have the checkpoint. Cool? Now, that sounds a little bit complicated, but it's not that bad because I do offer a lot of extra credit. Okay? I offer 8% of course extra credit for posting memes on the Discord. Uh, this is more than 365 typically does. I don't know what they're doing this iteration. But there's 16 weeks in the course. You can get half a percent of the course grade per meme per week. Now, it doesn't mean just find and Google the most garbage thing you have and throw it on our Discord. All right? That is not appreciated. It must be something that is somewhat relevant to the challenges, uh, cybersecurity, the topic. Uh, you can dunk on me. That's totally fine. Uh, if, if there's you know something, something funny that occurs or I have a big oops. Uh, right? Just something relevant to the course. Don't just Google cybersecurity meme and then throw it up there. You only get the extra credit if the meme is liked by the Pwn College bot on the Discord. Uh, there's a little thank you or good meme, thumbs up guy, little emoji that'll show up on the posting on the Discord and it'll say that it's by the Pwn College bot. That's how you know you got the extra credit. Any of the Pwn College instructors can trigger this. Uh, so that's anyone teaching a Pwn College class this semester. Doesn't have to be me. Could be someone from another class. Just post something that any of us find uh, relevant or somewhat amusing. I tend to be pretty lax with this. You give a little bit of effort. I'm going to try and like your memes because I want people to pass this class. I know it didn't sound like it in the first half, but I really do want people to pass this class. All right. Uh, you also get an additional 5% extra credit for answering questions on the Discord. All right. I, I don't know if I've mentioned that we have a Discord. But if you've been in 365, you're on there, right? I think I joined it. Cool. Uh, so on the Discord, you can right click on a message and then select apps, thanks. This will make the bot perform a little, uh, tie a little emoji to the message. And that is you thanking somebody for their answer to your question, their contribution. They said something that was useful. This is all tracked by a bot. You can get up to 5% extra credit based upon how helpful of a person you are. Please do not abuse this system and start thanking things that are useless or thanking each other. We do keep an eye on that and then we have to like throw out this extra credit, which is a bummer uh, because you're gonna need it. Uh, the extra credit follows a logarithmic scale capping at 50. Uh, if you're not familiar with what a logarithmic scale is, that means the first couple helpful things you do are worth more than the later ones, right? So try and participate and interact on the Discord. We're all gonna get through this together, guys. All right, uh, and I need all of you to help each other and we'll get to the other side of this class. Any student can thank another. Question? Uh, I remember this happening last year with 365, but are you going to be doing extra credit, potentially extracurricular stuff like NSA security? Uh, uh, okay, so the question for Twitch was if there will be extra credit for special events, for instance, uh, participating in a CTF, or if there is some cybersecurity event that is relevant, right? Uh, right now, the answer is no. Uh, however, uh, if something comes up and it's brought to my attention, I'm open to the idea, but we're gonna take that as it comes. Cool? So 
Uh, grading sounds really complicated, right? We have this checkpoint, we have extra credit. You know, what does this all mean? Yes, question? No? Okay. Uh, what does this all mean? So the 50% mark is like mission critical, all right? If you did 49% of every module, your course grade will be a 39.2%. However, if you went a little bit further and got that 50% mark, right? This is where that checkpoint matters you're gonna jump up almost 20%, right? That's the difference here between solving half and solving less than half. You still didn't pass the course, but you did a lot better, right? Now, what if you did 50% of the course of every module and you posted some memes, you know, you helped some people, you know, you tried, you put in some effort, you're gonna get a 73%, you'll pass the course with a C, all right? So you do not need to solve 100% of all of the modules, of all of the challenges, to, if you just want to pass this class, right? The extra credit is designed to make it so that you don't have to do that. Now, if you did 75% of every modules, you'd get a B. What if you did 75% and you got the extra credit? Right, well, you would also have to hit this early bird checkpoint, right? So you did 75% of the modules, got the first half done on time, and did some extra credit, you can walk out of here with an A. Now, to get an A plus in the class, you actually only need to solve 84% of the challenges. I think that's fair, all right? But the key to this working in your favor is that you do this extra credit and you start early. If you don't, that jump there, that 20% edge is gonna crush you. Questions here? Yes. How many did you do to like without extra credit to get like an A? Without extra credit? Yeah. Uh, well, then that'd be like 90%, whatever the A cutoff is. Okay. That, that's why extra credit's your friend. Uh, yeah. Will, will these percentages be coming down at any point? So the question, no, 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 that's fine. I, I got to repeat for, for Twitch because it, Mike doesn't necessarily pick up well. Uh, question was, uh, will these percentages come down uh, at any point? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, the, the syllabus does state that it's kind of left there as an escape hatch, but I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to do it. Uh, with the exception of the cutoff for an A+, plus, uh, these cutoffs can be curved downward in the event that students do worse than expected. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I have pretty low expectations. I don't think you'll do worse than them. Uh, yes? If you did, say, 100% of the modules, but not, you didn't do by the cutoff, like when you did it all before the day, what would your grade be? It'd be 80%. Okay. Right? Uh, so the, the question was, if I did 100% of the modules, but I did it all last minute, right? I procrastinated until the end, the, you would lose that 20% for the early bird checkpoint, but you'd get 100% on everything else. That results in 80%. Technically, you could do that with the extra credit and come out, walk out with like a 93, but th that's how the math would work. And it, So the 13 points of extra credit uh, work as this slide is defined. Uh, you get 8% from posting a meme that gets gets the bot to like it, right? That's 0.5% per week per meme, totally 8%. Gotcha. Uh, the other component for the 13 is being helpful. Once you hit 50, you've capped out at 5%. Right. I understand that. Yes. I'm just curious is like, are we guaranteed to get this 13 or is that like subjective to the... Are you going to post memes? Yeah, of course I am. Okay, then you'll get meme extra credit. Are you going to oh, help okay. people? Yeah. Then you're going to get help credit, oh, right? Okay. Like, like this, I can't tell you that I'm just going to give you 13%. That's based upon what you decide to do over yeah. the next 16 yeah, weeks. Yes. If you're a TA for 365, mm -hmm. uh, will you, do you have specific thanks from other 466 students? Or we also get thanks credits for helping 365 students. Okay. Uh, the question was, if you are also, in the, if you are in this class and also a 365 TA, does your help from being a TA contribute to this class? Uh, I don't have a technical solution, but the, the in, uh, I will implement one. Uh, the, the, the answer is going to be no. All right. That's uh, way too OP. Then. Yeah, yeah, it would be too OP. That's way too OP. Uh, you guys get asked that, that's a shame for asking that because that, that might have... <laughs> Might have snuck by, right? Uh, but that, that'll definitely have to get fixed. That, that, that's, that's way too OP. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> you should have mentioned it. You should have mentioned it.
Okay. So, uh, to kind of circle back to what I've already been saying, how do you succeed in this course? Watch the lecture videos when they are released and start early. You'll notice that all of the incentives, the extra credit, the structure of this is start early, come here with questions, right? If you do that, you'll do well. Ask questions to confirm your understanding. As soon as you're stuck and you're like, hey, I've spent an hour on here, ask something on the Discord. Participate. That is where the, am I guaranteed the memes extra credit? Am I guaranteed this help extra credit? Participate and you will get that extra credit. I try and be as loose as is reasonable uh, with liking your memes. Uh, if other people are not thanking your messages, I will thank you for them if I see it. All right. I want you guys to get this extra credit, but you all can help each other here. That's the design. Start early. Cannot uh, reiterate that enough. I already said this, read some man pages, ask good questions. So start early, ask questions, but does anyone know the difference between a good question and a bad question? There's some hand waving. Okay, what do we got? Good question, something that you might have struggled with that you think someone else might struggle with later on if they come up, come across it. Okay, so the question, just something that's intended to waste time. Okay, so the, the statement was a good question is something that uh, is a question about something I struggled with, something that other people may struggle with, uh, and it should benefit the class, right? This, this isn't a write a five paragraph essay on Canvas help thing, right? I want real questions. Uh, and I want them to be things that you're actually interested in. But it's not just topically are you asking about something you were stuck on. It's how you ask the question. Now, when I first started um, kind of interacting with Pwn College and being pretty relevant on the, the Discord here, I frequently linked this, uh, which I will probably link again this semester. It's a little bit small. We'll zoom in here. It's a very famous link uh, to a great write-up about how to ask questions the smart way. This is meant for technical people and asking technical questions. Don't say, I tried X, it don't work. I can't answer that. I don't know what you actually did. I don't wanna see your source code. Don't put your source code on the public channels. That will get deleted and you'll get chastised for it. No, it's a very, very, very long write-up. I don't expect you to read it, but there's plenty of great information about how to ask a technical question, how to frame it, provide information. I tried this, I saw this. What was the error message? What, what man pages have you read? What documentation, what are you thinking? These should be in your question. If you just say, help challenge five doesn't work, it seg false. You're not going to get a response or you're gonna get a response that says, hey, you should probably try and provide some more information so that we can answer that question. Right? It's not meant to be mean, it's to help teach you how to ask questions so that we can help you. Help us help you. The other link that you may see, so someone's heard this one, don't ask to ask. Uh, a very common thing that people do on the Discord, in, or in not just the Discord, but any technical forum, right? Is you ask, hey, does anyone know X? You're talking, to the TAs, you're talking, like the Discord is full of people that know X. The answer is yes. Don't ask to ask, just ask your question. Write a good question, throw it out there, and people will respond. If you ask something like, hey, does anyone know how to do level three? It's a waste of time. It's a waste of your time, it's a waste of my time. It's a waste of everyone's time. So please be direct with your questions. Try and be as detailed as is reasonable here so that we can help you. A lot of the time when I'm answering questions on the Discord, I am not at my computer. I'm walking from A to B, I'm on my phone. I look at it real quick because I see there's a message. If it's something I see that's well written, I can answer right on my phone right now. If you ask something that requires a bunch of additional information, I'm gonna put my phone in my pocket and carry on with my day because I can't answer that question while I'm on the go. So it benefits you to ask good questions. Please do so. All right. Instructor office hours. This is me. I'm Robert Wassinger. My handle on the Discord is Rob Waz. I am a screaming Bill Nye head hurtling through space. 
Uh, because I kind of vibe with it. Uh, if for whatever reason you need to email uh, me, it's rwasinger.asu.edu. Uh, I'm still deciding what I want to do for office hours. Um, I'm going to leave this up for discussion. We'll probably have it sorted out by next week, Thursday. Um, you do have other support than me, uh, which is the TAs. So I have three graduate TAs who have completed all of this material uh, and the material that follows this, uh, which is a graduate level cybersecurity course. Uh, and they are available to help you in person at the exact same time as this class, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, in person. So Monday, you'll have Michael. Wednesday, you'll have Zach. Uh, Friday, you'll have Sam. These will not be streamed. Okay, uh, this is in-person help. You have something, hey, I'm writing this code, it doesn't work, I need someone to like sit down with me and get me steered in the right direction, the Discord isn't helping me. You can show up to BYENG uh, 209. One of these three guys will be there. They'll be able to try and help you. Uh, there may be more than one, but this is what they are mandated uh, to kind of staff. Uh, a couple of them may show up on off hours to try and supplement that if uh, the need arises. Now this is uh, BYENG. We're kind of doing something different here. Uh, this isn't a room that is dedicated for this class. This is just all of Pone College. So there's 365 TAs, there's 466 TAs, there's graduate level uh, class TAs, right? Um, the idea being with everyone that knows things in one room, Hopefully, everyone can get the help they need as rapidly as is reasonable. At so the same time as this class, it just cuts off a little bit shorter, uh, ends at 520. Uh, this is why I'm not sure what I want to do with office hours, because I could schedule, for instance, a Friday, hey, come meet me in my office. I don't know that that gives you a benefit over showing up here where I may even try and make an appearance myself. Uh, what I'm thinking right now is I will do some type of office hour stream. Uh, if that is what vibes with people, people agree. Uh, if they're like, hey, I really want something in person, uh, I'll figure it out. Does anyone have a preference in general? You really like in-person time with, uh, with the instructor? Okay, we got, we got a few. Okay. Uh, other people like, hey, I don't want to be here. I just want to watch Twitch. Uh, okay, uh, so so maybe I'll try and uh, get a room and we'll combo it, right? I'll stream and be in person. Yeah, like we're doing for yeah, so something similar, but it'll be a smaller, smaller setting. All right, uh, but officially TBD, I got to reserve a room and kind of sort that out. Question: Would it be possible to have like a time that's like more earlier in the day, or not really? Uh, that is a good question. Uh, we I, so I could do my office hours sometime earlier in the day. Uh, like noonish? Is that reasonable? Or what is what is early here? What are we looking for? Yeah, noon. Uh, depends on what day, I think. But yeah, I think I can make that work. Okay. That makes sense. It might be classes on Monday. Uh, what's it does? Like, t typically, this is you know um, later in the day. So like, hypothetically, and I have to reserve, so this is all nothing. Uh, hypothetically, we'll shoot for like a Friday at noon. Most people don't have classes on Friday, so that shouldn't be a conflict. Uh, I'm not a morning person, which is why this is all noon. Noon was the number. All right. Uh, on the Discord and uh, my reviews, I'm very, very well known for answering questions at like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. All right. If, if you're up grinding, odds are I'm up as well. <laughs> right. Just facts. Uh, but uh, but I'll try. I'll try and do a uh, like noon on Friday uh, in person. And I'll stream it as well if that that's what works for everyone here. Double check with Tuesday, make sure they don't have a drastically different opinion. All right, we already saw this, uh, this slide, so I will be adding and changing challenges uh, this semester. You can work ahead, but you're doing so at your own risk. I'm not going to tell you what's going to be changed because I don't know. I haven't changed it yet. Uh, Adam is here. Oh, I didn't see you, Adam. Is Rob also up grinding or just up? It's a good question. <laughs> Where we're going to go with, I'm just working real hard. So, uh, Pwn College 2024 broadly. Um, 
I kept this slide. This was originally for a spring class, but pre we used to have previous year's office hours available on YouTube. Those were pulled at the beginning of the year. So if you took this class thinking, hey, I can rely on this like vast repository of years of TAs uh, doing things, good luck. I don't believe this has happened yet, so now is the time to capitalize. All right, uh, but sometime in the next couple days, uh, the previous Discord chat kind of setup in history is going to disappear. Uh, we're going to restructure the Discord, uh, so that way it's not a giant, let's go find the secret nugget on the Discord, right, from previous iterations of the class. The goal here is to force everyone to talk about the material and interact with each other. All right. It doesn't make sense to offer extra credit for help if the answers are already somewhere where you can get them. So there will be no answers on the Discord that's going to get cleaned up so that way people can help each other and get that extra credit. Everything that I do in class and in office hours will not be solving the direct challenges that you will be doing. Okay. I will create a, I'll write up a live proxy example. I'll come prepared with some examples. This is why I say try and tackle the material early, ask questions, ask questions on the Discord. If you ask questions on the Discord, it's something a lot of people are like, hey, I'm stuck. That lets me know before I come here in front of you all, here's something I should build to demo for you to answer that question in greater detail. The typical slide deck that you're going to get from me outside of today and Tuesday there's going to be about four or five slides, mostly with your memes. Then there's going to be a logistics slide, and then a here's what I'm demoing. Right? Here's what I brought, unless somebody has something to hit me. Most of our classes are going to be looking at a terminal. This is how I work. Okay. And it's going to be all live debugging, live messing around with the challenges. I don't like giant slide deck classes. And that's not what this is going to be. So, as I said, most of my slides end with a slide like this. It says demo plans time permitting. So there's two things I wanted to try and run through if I had the time, uh, which looks like I will. First is a quick tour of Pwn College, how to get set up, how does this all kind of work. So, uh, one of the questions I received via email, uh, one of the threads, uh, one of the questions I received via email was, uh, hey, we're not on Canvas. No, this class is not going to be on Canvas. Uh, everything that you do is going to be on this website right here, pwn.college. You can create an account for free. All we need is your email. I'm already logged in, but there's a uh, kind of create account button up there. The second thing that you need to do is you need to link this to your ASU. So I know you're an ASU student in this class because this site is kind of open to the world, right? Uh, so I need to know that you're an ASU student. See if I can find it. So connect your Discord account, create the account, go to settings. Uh, go to Discord, connect Discord. That will give, grant you a Discord role that will give you access to private Discord channels that are specific to this class. In general, I try and do everything, all communications in um, public forums so that everyone can answer everything, uh, everyone can benefit. But if there is some like course specific thing that you have, there's a logistics question, or you just don't feel comfortable uh, speaking out loud, um, you know, on the public Discord, uh, we do have private channels uh, where we can communicate there. All announcements, communications, changes, things like that will be done via Discord. There is an announcement channel that requires this Discord role. So create an account, do the connect, you'll get the feed of information. If you don't, you're kind of playing from behind. I'll say things in class and it'll be on slides, uh, but you're better off getting it from there. Question. So the slide decks that we cover in class, for example, on Tuesday and Thursday, will those be posted to Pwn College themselves? Or uh, they, they, they will. Okay. Uh, so the question was, the slide decks, like what I just ran through, will those be posted to Pwn College themselves? Uh, the answer is yes. 
Uh, it, I'm going to try for same day. It may be like next day, but reasonably um, quick it will be. Uh, so obviously this is not program security, right? Um, let's see, do these, do the resources? Okay. So what you'll get uh, when you click into a module uh, something like this with lectures and readings. Uh, these up here at the top are the pre-recorded um, lectures. Uh, these are by a prior instructor, uh, Jan, fine gentleman, you may have met him, uh, where he talks about the, the information that you'll need to complete the uh, module. Uh, what you'll see uh, down below is these live streams will be embedded here. They'll be named class, Robert, date, and it'll open up uh, the exact same way uh, as this. So you'll get, once I upload the YouTube video, there'll be an embedded YouTube video of what this camera here has, and the slides will be embedded right below so that you will be able to reference those right there on the site. Good question. Okay. So you create an account. I actually don't know. Adam, are you there? Where does the student ID go? Do you... Yes, question. Ah, uh, you're raising your hand. Yeah, I'm going for I was. it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I noticed as you were walking through the dojo, the modules in the dojo, mm -hmm. I noticed that it said at the top how long there is until it's due. Yes. Will we as students be able to see those times yes. or no? Yes. Uh, um, so the, the question was, uh, when I go into the course, and an important distinction here, is you'll notice that I'm up here, we could go program security, uh, reverse engineering, and you're like, oh, this is the same thing, right? There, there's yon smiling face, all right? The changes that I make, more than likely, will not all be visible via this path. It is very important that you access the material through this CSE 466 fall 2024 because it doesn't make sense for these live class streams to show up over in Yellow Belt land, right? Those are people who are just independently trying to tackle the material, not people that are taking this course. So make sure that you follow it from CSE 466 and then select the module. What is presented here and possibly what is listed in the challenges uh, will be different. So make sure to follow that path. Now Adam's gonna save me here. Click on Dojo. So I have to link Pwn College to your ASU ID, right? So we're gonna go into CSE 466 Fall 2024. We go to Course. And I believe he is saying Identity. And it says, enter your uh, ASU student ID, your 10 digits. Uh, that's what lets me link stuff up, know you're a student, grant you the role, make sure that when uh, the course ends, I can export your grade uh, to ASU. Yes? Just one more question about the dojo itself. Mm -hmm. um, I know this is probably not a feature that's already in there, but is there a way to, I know there's live grading and everything, mm -hmm. is there a way to know where you stand in a particular dojo, for example? So like a particular model, module like the dojo? Okay, so for Twitch. I remember it's like 50% checkpoint, 75% completion for like an A or something like that. Okay, uh, for, for Twitch, the question was, hey, I know there's like some grading thing somewhere on the site, but like how do I make sense of it for the individual module I'm in? Uh, you got a couple ways. So you won't see it right now, but you see the totals here, right? This is your solve rate. Uh, so right now, this is zeros. No, it's all zeros, right? right. So you, you can see if this was 22 out of 44, you're halfway there. Um, Adam also added this very nice progress bar. Okay, that's right? what I was wondering. But, so there is a progress bar where you hover over the little, yep. uh, the little module. Okay, yep, but, but we can do better, all right? Uh, because you, you said, hey, I know there's live grading, right? We'll see if this works. Uh, if we go back to course and you go to grades, there's your live grade. Oh, right there. And oh, you see right here, program security checkpoint. There's a weight of two, this other one has eight, eight. right? Okay. That's your 100% for the module. Gotcha. You got an X or you get a check. Gotcha. All right, checks are good, X's are bad. 
And then this is your uh, cumulative grade of the entire course, of everything, everything that's planned. Uh, you'll see that the due dates are all listed there. It's all already preloaded. Uh, if anything looks off, I probably fat fingered it. Let me know, we'll get it squared away. Cool? Uh, Twitch question, do we get a colored belt for completing all challenges in the class or would we still need to go complete all of the challenges in the like yellow or green modules? It is a fantastic question. And right now, the answer, and this may change, all right? But right now the answer is you have to do what is listed right here. Now, a kind of caveat there is I said, hey, we're gonna do rock, and we're gonna do microarchitecture, right? And that's all the way actually over here in the blue belt material. Some of these modules, as this course progresses, will move to different belts. So we will be changing the belt standard as the course progresses. Doesn't mean it'll be one-to-one -one at the end of this, uh, this adjustment, but it's gonna be pretty close. How can something be due on the 16th of December? There's another question I got. So if we go back to our slide deck here. Um, uh, this was our tentative schedule, 12-16. Uh, uh, so finals week is 12-14. Right, 12-9 uh, through 12-14. My logic here is I want to give you guys as much time as possible to work on things. Our, de our deadline internally as instructors to submit grades is 12 16. So I will give you until the very last moment, it'll be like the day before, I want like 12 hours to pull grades, export it, make sure that ASU um, is, is, it maps out well, right? Um, but I will give you until I have to submit grades uh, to work on things. Uh, one thing that's not listed on here, which is my bad. Oh no, it's there, I just didn't mention it. Um, all challenges can be solved late for 50% credit through the entire semester. Okay. So if on December 15th, you want to go back and do something from the first module, you'll get half credit. So how does that half credit stack up with the rest of it? Because I know probably by then you would know what your course grade is. So if you, sub if you went back into a module and submitted something, mm -hmm. How does the half credit total up? Because I believe it's, so let's say I had 75%, I said I, I finished two challenges from, I don't know, reverse engineering, got that to an 84. Does that change my course grade or how would that work? Okay, the, the question was, how does this 50% credit kind of match up and fit into my course grade? Uh, the answer is it's already computed right here in real time. So what you will see if I remember right, is these progress totals, like it, I saw, you say I solved one here by the due date, and then I solved three late. You'll see a one, and then there'll be like a parenthesis plus three, is I think how we represent it. Uh, and the, the grades page will do the math for you. Okay, fantastic. All right, so, so that's all taken care of. The only thing that doesn't show up on the grades page in real time uh, is extra credit. Currently, I have to add that periodically. Uh, so I will pull how many memes were posted, how much uh, help people were doing, and I will add uh, two lines down here, and it will say meme extra credit as of whatever, and then uh, helpfulness extra credit as of um, the, the other date. Uh, so the extra credit will be there, but I have to pull it myself manually and enter it. Uh, but the idea is you'll always know kind of how you're doing here. Uh, good question. Any other questions about the, the course as a whole? I've got like another 15 minutes uh, and I can actually show course question. Uh, will the videos and the lectures be enough to solve all the problems or will have to do like a little bit of reading or not? Uh, the question is, will all of the videos, Adam says, show setup, please. Okay, give me one moment. Adam's yelling at me. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's fine. So, so I did. Okay. So Adam says, after you create the account, we'll go from dojos. We'll go to CSE 466 fall 2024, wherever that is. 
Uh, we'll go to course. And then we'll go to setup. And that uh, has a nice series of links you can click to make sure everything is squared away. All right, five green check marks means things work. Thank you for that, Adam. Okay, uh, your course question, sir. So the, the question is, if I watch the videos, uh, do I have all of the information I need to solve every single challenge? The answer is yes, if you are clever, okay? Uh, we aren't going to tell you do A, B, C, and then the challenge is do A, B, C. We're gonna talk about a concept. We're gonna say how different systems work, uh, how, for instance, take like uh, the, the heat module. Uh, we're going to talk about how the heap works. We're going to talk about the metadata of the heap. We're going to talk about the, how these um, values are used in the heap. We're going to talk about how they can be abused to perform certain actions. But then you get to a challenge. It's not going to say, well, you just need to do what was at this timestamp. Okay. Uh, the idea of Pwn College, this course, all of it, is learn by doing, ask questions. Okay. This is how you internalize this material. You learn by doing. You're not gonna think about something the exact same way I do. I don't wanna say, the heap works like this and you just need to type A, B, C and then it's going to work. And then you say, I say, well, what do you know? Well, you type A, B, C and then it's gonna, no. I want you to mess around with it. I want you to make sense of it. Most of the challenge, well, not most, but a good amount of the challenges have unintended solves, right? There's an intended solution where it's like, this is what I think the student should do. If you solve it and it's not the intended path, I don't care, you solved it, right? You figure it out for you. There is not one right way to do this. If you wanna reason about the challenge using GDB, that's great. If you wanna reason about the challenge using IDA, great. Use what makes sense to you. If you hate the terminal, right? And you're like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna learn how any of this works. I don't use Vim, I don't use Tima, I, I don't want any of this. That's fine, you don't have to. The way that this website works is we can go into a challenge we can click start it's going to say loading and hopefully it says challenge started good uh, you can click on workspace or desktop up here at the top workspace is going to give you a vs code like interface Let's see if I can make a terminal appear here. Because I don't know how to use VS Code. Sorry. You said control tilde? Beautiful. Cool. Uh, so this VS Code interface in the browser already has the challenge stuff located. This is going to look a little bit ugly, but we'll get there. If I ls this challenge folder, this is your challenge. There's a C file and there's a binary. For this particular challenge, this happens to be uh, a shell coding challenge. And if you like VS Code, you can interact with everything via VS Code. If VS Code isn't really your flavor, you can have a full desktop baked into your browser. And this is all interacting in that same environment. So we can go right here, LS challenge. All right, I'm looking at the exact same thing. And if you're like me and you like the terminal, you can SSH uh, to hacker at dojo.pwn.college. That's the, a me thing for security. And now I have an SSH session interacting with that exact same environment. Use whatever makes sense for you, okay? What makes sense for me is the terminal, and that's where I'm going to primarily be um, kind of working from, unless we need to use something like um, Ida, Ghidra, right? So some type of graphical tool. Uh, 
Now I did set up SSH there. If you go click up, up on that gear here at the top, you'll see SSH key. You just put your public um, SSH key here, then you can SSH uh, as I just kind of showed. Your username is always hacker. That isn't like an example name. Everyone connects to the dojo as the hacker user. It will route you to the correct challenge. All right. Uh, so I got your question. Did I have any other questions here? I've got about seven minutes. Yes. Do you mind giving me like an example of like a challenge when I see in the course that might be more like difficult? A more an example of a more difficult challenge in the course. Yeah, something that's like kind of highlights the difficulty of the course itself. Sure. That you kind of mentioned at the beginning. Uh, so I will go for, and it doesn't mean I'm going to include it, but it'll give you. Kind of an approximation of where we're going. Right. Um, let's do right here. So this is from System Security, uh, which is like the very end module. And now this is the iteration from uh, the prior course. Uh, if we look at this challenge, we see there's two files. Okay. Uh, one ends in .ko. Does anyone know what a .ko is? Uh, what? It's a kernel module. So uh, if you ever want to know what a file is at the terminal, uh, you can run the file command. All right, so this right here is a 64-bit elf. So this is just a user land binary. And then if we do the same thing on that, uh, we see that, yes. So in order to interact with this, uh, we have to actually have a VM because it's a kernel module for reasons. Uh, this is kind of jumping ahead here, but we're going to start up a Linux VM. I'm then going to uh, drop into this Linux VM. Uh, you'll see that my prompt has changed. It's now hacker at VM uh, practice, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the reason that we do that is because this VM has loaded that kernel module. Okay. Now, the kernel module, a bit of a spoiler here, uh, exposes a text device that, if I remember, is stored in the proc. Yes, uh, this right here. Uh, this is a um, text kernel device that you can interact with to interact with that kernel module. Now, what does that kernel module do? I don't know. It's your job to figure it out. Okay. Now, what is this user binary? Well, we have this thing here, and you get this. Okay, what does that do? I don't know. It's your job to figure it out. All right. Uh, it turns out these two things are going to be related. Okay. There's no source code here. We could use GDB on this thing. Right. Uh, we could run this in GDB inside the VM. Okay, that's that's cool. Where where am I in this thing? Oh, I'm in except. So I guess this thing is going to require a network connection. I might need to figure out what port it wants to communicate on. I need to connect to it. I need to understand how this usually in binary works and how it relates to the kernel. Your goal in every single challenge is actually really, really simple. All you need to do is get the output of this flag file. All right. Now, that should be easy, but the problem is the flag file is owned by root, and you are not root, you are the hacker user. So somehow, you must elevate your permissions such that you can read this file. Now, if we take a look at uh, this binary right here, is also owned by root, happens to be set UID. Uh, if you're familiar with what set UID in, in Linux, it means this bind the process from running this will run as root. So maybe you could exploit this usually in binary, right? Uh, somehow hijack control and then obtain the value of that, that flag because the process would be running as root. Maybe there's no vulnerability in this user land binary and you have to use this user land binary to then interact with that kernel device. And then you'd be running something in the kernel. Maybe you need to exploit the kernel to then jump back and interact with that file in user land. 
Now, if that sounds like a lot, don't worry, because I'm showing you the end of the course, not the beginning. Okay? We're going to get there, and it's going to be not as brutal as you think, but it will be hard. Okay? Uh, my general promise to you as an instructor is if you are willing to put in the time and ask questions, I'm willing to write giant blog posts on the Discord explaining how things work. I will write up examples. I will live demo whatever it is you want to know. It doesn't matter if it's immediately relevant to the module or it's just, hey, man, I, why does your GDB look different than mine? Okay, I don't know what you know, and the only way I can help get you where we're trying to go is if you tell me what you need. Cool? Uh, there was a question on Twitch here, which is, will I release the module early? The answer is no, because that's not fair to the Tuesday people. Uh, I'm treating you all as one class. It's not fair in my eyes as an instructor to release something before their first day of class. That's why the first module is going out on Tuesday. Uh, with that, I have one minute. Any other questions? Cool. Uh, if there is anything you want to ask individually, I'm going to hang out a bit after class. Uh, Twitch, it was good hanging out with you. And I will let you all go. You probably want to see it on there every time. Every time. No signal. All right.